Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Battleship New Jersey has had 19 commanding officers that uh, we recognize and list as the CEOs of the battleship. But in doing research about the ship, I found that there are a couple more names that might be interesting to add to this list of commanding officers. So, uh, first off, Commander Rice is sometimes listed as a CO of the battleship. Commander Rice was the executive officer of the ship uh, right at the end of World War II. He has a really, really interesting Navy career, uh, including command of the submarine Drum, which is a museum ship in Mobile, Alabama, we got to visit last September. So after commanding submarines, he gets sent to the battleship as the executive officer. And at one point in 1945, while the ship is serving in World War II, Captain Woolridge has to leave the ship and Commander Rice is left in charge. Uh, this probably happens on a number of occasions with other commanding officers. Um, and usually, well, that, that's what the XO is here for, to take over if, if the commanding officer isn't around. But uh, this is in wartime, and um, it's probably worth going back and looking at some of those ex executive officers that exercised command for a couple of days or weeks or months uh, while their COs were left and see, hey, was the CO medically unable to do the job? Was he uh, just going on shore leave and said, hey, watch the boat until I come back? Was uh, it something like he, he was detached to go and serve on a court-martial panel or you know, do something else, the Navy reassign them temporarily and then sends them back. Uh, and depending on the circumstances of that, it might be worth looking at some of these exos and uh, figuring out if they should be on this list. Another name that I think should be on this list is Captain A.J. Chantry. Captain Chantry was the head of the design bureau that designed the Iowa-class battleships. So he was the earliest commander in the entire history of Iowa-class battleships. That's not necessarily why I think he should be on this list. After leaving the uh, Bureau of uh, Construction, he goes to the Philadelphia Navy Yard to take over uh, the yard there and the ships under construction, which includes Battleship New Jersey. So before the ship even has a prospective commanding officer, uh, before Captain Carl Holden is even assigned to the ship, Captain Chantry is in charge of her under construction. So in my head, he's the, the first commanding officer there. I'm not sure if I would count uh, the captains of yards when the ship is just being reactivated later on, uh, because they're in charge for maybe a couple of months or maybe not at all because the ship gets a prospective commanding officer uh, right at the beginning of the process. But while the ship is under construction, Chantry was in charge for, I want to say, a year and a half, two years before Holden uh, shows up. Another possible candidate to be on this list is a prospective commanding officer who did not get the chance to command the ship. Captain Richard Alexander was an up-and-coming naval officer who uh, was the one person selected to command the only battleship in the world during the Vietnam War. So that shows the high regard that the Navy held for him. So he was Battleship New Jersey's first prospective commanding officer in 1968. Uh, however, prior to being given that command, he had been uh, part of the Bureau of Personnel and he had assigned a lieutenant commander named Marcus Aurelius Arnheider to command a destroyer escort named Vance during the Vietnam War. Uh, morale on Vance was found to be dangerously low, and Arnheider was relieved of command. Um, so at that point, there, there was a little bit of an investigation into whether or not that individual should have been command, uh, given command of a destroyer escort or not. Uh, and Captain Alexander supported uh, Lieutenant Commander Arnheider and his own decision to put Arnheider in command and contradicted the Navy, and that ended his 
uh, career, more or less. He was removed from prospective command of the battleship, and the Navy had to scramble around, and they found a cruiser guy, uh, Admiral, or at that point, Captain uh, J. Edward Snyder, who was, I believe, about to be given command of St. Paul, uh, and they reassigned him from that to New Jersey. There aren't anyone, in, or there isn't anyone in the battleship track at this point. Uh, so cruisers are the next best thing. Uh, Captain Snyder had been in the cruiser track since World War II. He served during the Battle of Saragawa Strait on cruisers. And, and so they're, all right, you're the next best guy after Alexander to take command of the ship. Uh, so it's possible that uh, one could include Alexander in this list. It's not uncommon for ships to go through multiple prospective commanding officers. For example, the submarine SSN 796 has already had three prospective commanding officers. And none of them have been removed because they spoke out against the Navy or showed poor judgment or anything like that. Uh, it's just that ship has had such a prolonged construction period, partially because she's being constructed during COVID and that's caused all sorts of delays. Uh, partially because she is the first one that is being built to, from the keel up to accommodate uh, a mixed gender crew. So there are some changes to the basic design that are being worked in and found out. Uh, and so it's going to end up taking longer to construct the submarine New Jersey than it took to construct either of the battleships New Jersey that predated her. Uh, and so just because of that long length of time and extended length of time that multiple commanding officers have rotated in and out as part of the natural process. I'm incredibly proud uh, to be the CEO of the New Jersey, and I'm incredibly proud of what New Jersey, the battleship, uh, did for this country. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to completing uh, the construction of the New Jersey, getting the, the New Jersey, the submarine, um, underway so we can continue writing that history of, of what the name New Jersey does uh, as, a, as a U.S. warship uh, in, in defense of our nation. It will be very interesting to see when New Jersey is an active ship and uh, when she follows in her namesake's legacy and becomes a historically significant ship. Uh, if when people list the commanding officers of her, Will they go back to these prospective commanding officers who never uh, actually commanded the ship in combat? Or will they count them in the list of commanding officers because they did so much to form the culture of this new ship before she even touched the water? Uh, and some of the culture things that they have done are work with the battleship New Jersey to get steel and wood and other things from this ship to include in the new New Jersey to continue her legacy, and also cool things like including the uh, red dolphins that only crew members on the Devilfish, USS New Jersey, uh, are going to be wearing. So that they are creating a, a very special culture on that ship, which will continue when she's an active vessel. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. What do you guys think? Prospective commanding officers uh, on the list or not? What do you think about the various names I gave as uh, possible additions to the list of 19 commanding officers? Uh, let me know in the comments section down below if you think, yeah, they, they belong on there, or no, they, they didn't get to command the ship underway, they don't count. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys have given the museum over the years, and there's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support us. You can also support the museum and our YouTube channel by liking, sharing, subscribing so more people find out about us. Thanks for watching.